safety, and more. Your calls, comments, and texts welcome at 343-0106. Now, here are your hosts, retired judge and certified NRA instructor, Rusty Johnston, and certified NRA law enforcement instructor, Adam Strange. They're gonna pry these guns right out of my hands when they come to take them away. I believe in the rights that my fathers gave me when he signed the Constitution that day. No misguided president or crooked politician with a greasy pocket be spared. When the hardworking man gets tired of your cry, it's gonna rain right, beware. Don't tread on me. All right, welcome to Armed Alabama, your favorite Tuesday evening radio show here on 106.5. Glad you can join us. we got a good show for you tonight. Uh, I'm Adam Strange. I'm an NRA law enforcement uh, certified instructor for a handgun, shotgun, and patrol rifle. If you heard our intro there, that was Buck Allen. He's a local singer-songwriter uh, in the area. And we play a couple of his songs during the show, but we want to thank Buck Allen for uh, letting us use his song for our intro for the first hour of Armed Alabama and for the second hour of Armed Alabama. If you're just now joining, this is a two-hour show from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. about self-defense, firearm and ammo selection, home protection, concealed carry, training, proper range etiquette, and, of course, The judge always talks about Alabama law, Mississippi law, Florida law, and the U.S. Constitution. And intergalactic law. So we're glad to have the judge judge with us and be able to provide that kind of information. And you will not find a resource like him anywhere on the radio. If you have a comment or a question, you can give us a call at 251 343-0106. And we will be broadcasting live on our Facebook page, hopefully sometime pretty quick. And that Facebook page is Armed Alabama Radio, FM Talk 106.5. And we are broadcasting live now. So if you want to go on Facebook and check us out, Check out the program here. There's always a lot going on here in the studio. You can go to our Facebook page, Armed Alabama Radio, FM Talk 106.5, and be sure to like and subscribe, and be sure and share uh, on your page and share to your friends. You can also go and check us out on our YouTube channel, and that's Armed Alabama. Like and subscribe. The judge puts together lots of really good videos for our YouTube channel, there's a lot of resource inf- uh, information there. And you can also go to our website, and that's armedalabama.com. And you can go there, and not only you can see all the information we have, all the resources we have there on our website, but you can go there and you can listen to all of our previous radio shows going all the way back to when we started March 2015. So a lot of people will listen to us. Uh, via our website there it's kind of interesting we'll get emails and stuff uh, just from random people it's like hey you know i don't get a chance to check out your radio show on tuesday nights but i always get a chance to listen to your show via your website so that's kind of neat to go to our website there and you can um, listen to our podcast on our on our website so lots of different ways of listening to us and uh, you can also uh, you can also uh, call in if you have any comments or questions, like I said, but you can also listen to us via the TuneIn app. And you can download that on your phone, TuneIn app, uh, and then go to 106.5 on that TuneIn app, of course, for Mobile, Alabama, and you can listen. You can also listen from our website. We simulcast 106.5 uh, feed uh, on our website. 
24-7. So if you can't get enough of us on Tuesday night, which we hope you don't, you can go to our website there and you can listen um, at your leisure. I can't believe we're on, and I can't believe I figured out how to do a T off of the uh, sound system here. And um, it's just amazing. I guess we have enough equipment here to do uh, about anything we wanted to do. I noticed they uh, removed another Confederate monument today. Uh, They said Johnny Reb was removed in uh, uh, this park in Orlando. Of course, that's what they nicknamed him. You know, where on it says that. And he was erected, I believe, in 1911. You would think he was a World War I soldier. Now, while they removed him, they left Mohandas Gandhi up, who, according to a very recent scholarly book by an Indian national, is, says he's a pedophile and a wife beater and was responsible for most of the violence that took place when India and Pakistan split. And plus a, uh, a pavilion, I put this on the web, on our Facebook page, called a Ting, a gift from the Red Chinese government, 1986 or 8, uh, arguably the most murderous regime in the history of the world. So those are worthy to stay in the same park, but the Confederate soldier, an unknown soldier, is deemed he has to be kicked out. And uh, it's just more... Uh, uh, Government officials without a backbone and no sense of history. Didn't a bunch of Northerners retire to Orlando? Yeah. I yeah, think that's that, what happened. Yeah, it's probably Union-occupied territory mm-hmm. like Atlanta so. is. <laughs> I still fail to see the point of all this other than political correctness or some officials wanting to look like they're doing something, it, it, no matter well, how stupid it is. They are such creatures, you know, of— I mean, they're they're taking away history, whether you like the history or not. Uh, well, that's right, and uh, you know, it, it's a guy. Anybody that um, you know, most of you, I'm sure, can get on the computer, go to C-SPAN. They have a vast library, and type in incorrect term to me, but type in Civil War monuments, and you'll see a discussion by a guy whose last name is S E. D-O-R-E, Sador. He's a uh, professor at the City uh, University of New York. He's been to over a 1,000 monuments, taken photographs, and written two books. There's, I think there are only two that even have the word Confederate on there. Most say things like, to our uh, fallen brothers from so-and-so county who died defending us uh, and the sovereignty of the state of Virginia. And, uh, you know, all the experts, they've never seen the monuments like this man. And he's from New York. <laughs> I mean, so it's, it's, it's a cause that uh, they can beat us up for again. If it's not that, it'll be something else. And, and you know— I mean, it's just hard to understand what the— what is the, the the real motivation? Well, that's right. You know, you know, I'm probably the only lawyer and and judge who has a secede bumper sticker on my car. <laughs> I don't really want to, but I I think if you capitulate to PC, then they've won the war. They've won the battle. They've won the battle for the hearts and minds. It's like if you don't speak at a college campus you've been invited to, then they've won the war. And they're winning it every day. And, uh, you know, as Reagan said, it all happened, and he told the Berkeley uh, faculty, it all happened when some of you people that ought to know better started giving in to these college kids and letting them think they could break the laws they didn't agree with. And uh, I've never seen Reagan that mad before, and it's on our YouTube channel. Uh, and I think it may be on our Facebook page, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is, by uh, Embed. But I've never seen Reagan that angry before. Well, in some ways, uh, PC, you know, being politically correct, it kind of stifles free speech in a way because, Absolutely. you know, people are worried about offending somebody or whatever, and they end up talking to each other, and they're whispering. I'm like, why are you whispering? Well, I just don't want to offend nobody. That That's right. And, you know, people think there's such a thing as hate speech. Well, not in this country. You can say the, you know, 
it may cost you your job, it may cost you your reputation, but you can say the worst word imaginable, and it's still legal to say that. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to step into a break, and we'll be right back with more of Armed Alabama on FM Talk 106.5 Mobile, Alabama. They're walking on the fighting side of me. Running down a way of life, our fighting men have caught and died to keep. It's easy to find Mike Ward's Liberty Safes. At I-65 and Moffett Road, look for the giant yellow safe. Inside is Alabama's largest selection of top quality safes. When you buy a Liberty Safe, you get superior protection for your most valuable possessions. Come to Mike Ward today to get the style of safe at the right security level to fit your needs. You're going to get service no other store can offer. Mike Ward's Liberty Safes, I-65 at Moffett Road. Lock them up. Locally owned and operated, Priola Ace Hardware and Lumber carries a complete line of industrial products to homeowner project needs. Servicing all of Mobile County, located one mile north of I-65 exit 19 on Highway 43, we bring you what you expect with true customized customer service. From a full-service lumber and plywood supplier to a K2 cooler dealer is what you'll find along with a huge selection of Milwaukee and DeWalt power tools and accessories, safety equipment, craftsman tools, paint, plumbing, electrical supplies, propane, and concrete. We are your one-stop shop with personal service. See Jamie and her A-team for unsurpassed customer service and competitive pricing. We are locally owned and operated, so we know what our customers need, and we will deliver on our promise of helping you is the most important thing we are going to do today. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. This program is a production of Armed Alabama, LLC. The comments and views of the hosts are those of Armed Alabama, LLC, for which it is solely responsible. The view and comments of the callers, guests, and texters do not necessarily represent the views of the sponsors or advertisers of Armed Alabama, LLC, or of Armed Alabama, LLC, Bigler Broadcasting, LLC, FM Talk 1065, or WABH. No comments from Judge Rusty Johnston should be taken as legal advice, but as educational information. Judge Johnston is not engaged in the practice of law and should not be sought out to answer legal questions off the air. Seek legal advice from a qualified attorney who knows the complete specifics of your legal matter. When your air conditioner is no longer keeping you cool, call Grayson Air Conditioning. Their six factory trained service technicians on duty 24-7 will get you comfortable again. Grayson Air Conditioning is a factory authorized carrier dealer that services all brands, including Mitsubishi Ductless Mini Split Systems. Serving Southwest Alabama since 1977, David Grayson and Grayson air conditioning is a certified licensed contractor and is recognized by alabama power company as a superior solutions dealer that's grace and air conditioning for all your air conditioning needs call 633-5665 for service Longleaf Pine is the South's original pine tree, towering over all others. Vast clear-cutting logging operations in the first half of the last century destroyed these beautiful longleaf forests, some well over 100 years old. Their wood sent to New England, New York, and Europe. Many Southerners have no memory of the magnificent longleaf forests that covered the South. The America's Longleaf Restoration Initiative is a concerted effort to restore and conserve longleaf pine forests. The best part is it's working. For more info, visit americaslongleaf.org. Step up to the firing line. Armed Alabama is back. Questions, comments, and texts at 343-0106. You smell that? Hey, fun, son. Nothing else in the world smells like that. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Smells like victory. All Love right, that. Robert Duvall. Yeah, huh? I'm one of my favorite actors, Robert Duvall. Better get that napalm ready for those uh, North Koreans. Yeah. So just want to give you a heads up. We got really kind of cruising through the first segment of the show, but uh, we've got a big show for you. So tonight we will have uh, Senator Luther Strange will be calling in, as well as Representative Mo Brooks. So be sure and... Uh, Stay tuned throughout this first hour, and then we're going to have a really good second hour here. So, got a lot going on the show tonight. And I'll have to bring you up to date on my refinishing two 
Remington 1148s at the same time. <laughs> All right, so um, just as soon as I said it, uh, Senator Strange called in. Probably so somebody imitating him. Welcome, Senator. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing wonderful. Glad you can join us. Absolutely. Glad to do it. And is it somebody's birthday? Yeah, it is somebody's Adam's birthday. Adam's 50. <laughs> I thought so. Well, happy birthday, Adam. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm not 50, <laughs> Judge. Not yet. Can't wait till I'm 50. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm fo- I'm reached an age where I'm 40 and holding. Right. I hear you. right. <laughs> good, good. That's great. Where, where are you t- this evening? Up in the great northern wasteland? <laughs> I'm, in, I, <laughs> I, I'm in the northern wasteland. I started out in Foley this morning and made my way through uh, Conecuh County, uh, spent some time in Montgomery, and then... Uh, Eventually made it to Birmingham, heading uh, north of here uh, tomorrow, heading to Huntsville. You know, people that stay in this part of the state don't realize, what is it, two-thirds of the votes are from Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, northward? That's what they say. Uh, but, you know, I think Baldwin County Mobile is critically important. Uh, yeah. I think it's, you know, it's. I've, I've been very blessed to have a good good uh, results there, and I'm hoping to do that again. We were actually in Mobile all day yesterday, toured around the uh, container facility and Talked about uh, infrastructure, the, the the bridge, and uh, and then the project to deepen, widen the port. So it was a great day in Mobile. Beautiful. Yeah, in a primary, it certainly is important here. Yeah, and uh, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that don't realize how much industry is here in South Alabama. So oh, it's incredible, uh, and the new stuff that's coming in—the Walmart facility and Theodore, and uh, of course. Uh, you know, the shipbuilding facilities are unbelievable at Austell. You know, that's that's a critical employer and a critical defense industry contractor. And uh, since I serve on the Armed Services Committee, which I really am honored to serve on, that's I, I've been spending a lot of time focused on that as well. And, uh, Senator, you and I have talked uh, previously about um, shipbuilding. You know, that's really uh, close to my heart. And the mm-hmm. fact that's... Uh, for every dollar that is spent as far as government dollars uh, to build ships for the United States Navy, of course, in defense of our country, uh, that is some of the best money that is spent regarding, uh, A, is much needed uh, surface ships for the U.S. Navy, but also the work and the technical skill set that it provides uh, those employees and the whole South Alabama benefits from that uh, because of that technical ability and experience. It's unbelievable, Adam. You're exactly right. And uh, the mission of the LCS is really critical, and so that's why it's so important. But, you know, I especially appreciate the job that, the, you know, you had, had, have done and what the shipbuilders do. I, I spent a, a year after college saving up for law school. I worked on a on oil field supply boat in the North Sea between uh, off Whoa. the coast of our, uh, Scotland and Norway. And I tell you, if you don't have a shipbuilder that knows what they're doing, you'll go down. I mean, you know, your life depends on it. That's exactly so right. I have a great, great appreciation for the good work they do. That, that's rough weather out there. It is rough. <laughs> <laughs> Central, let me it's ask, good, ask you a question. I, I, I tell people it's good practice for politics to be in a, in a dark, harsh uh, environment <laughs> oh, like that. It gets you toughened up for politics. Last some maybe it was week before last, maybe it was last week, but some of the you know Shapiro and some of the talk show type people that go around the college campuses. I guess it was a hearing for the House were testifying about all the abuse they've taken at these college campuses. You know where the Berkeley radicals won't let them talk and all of that. Um, why doesn't the Justice Department? start prosecuting some of these people, specifically, you may not be familiar with the code number, but 18 U.S. Code 241, which basically says, you know, if you de- if you intimidate, harass, et cetera, and deprive somebody of a right guaranteed by the Constitution, and, if, mm-hmm. and then secondly, if you do it in mask, which Antifa does all the time, you know, it's yep. up to 10 years. Instead, they're being prosecuted, if at all, for disorderly conduct. Yeah, it, it's terrible. It's kind of like, Adam, to me, it's a little bit like the sanctuary city uh, situation. If, if the uh, We have a First Amendment right, you know, uh, and these yeah. guys on the college campuses, 
if they're not defending your right, my right to uh, free speech, then why should we give them uh, money, federal money? It's like the bill that I've got for building the wall. You know, I'm trying to take the money away from sanctuary cities and put the money they would get towards building the wall. I mean, it's just a fundamental constitutional right. You know, and the, yeah. it worries me what's going on in these campuses. It's almost like a, a, it's so intolerant. It's almost like fascism or something. If you disagree with anybody, if you even have a different opinion. Oh, We're yeah. going to shut you down. It's it's unbelievable. It really is. It, you know, I think if you prosecuted about a dozen of them and maxed them out and threw them in one of the super maxes for 10 years, they'd stop it. <laughs> you know, that, that's what happened to the Chicago 8, of course, before it got reversed. And mm-hmm. uh, it just needs to stop. Uh, you know, if we're throwing people in jail for using crack, uh, we ought to be throwing them in. Th- that just cuts at the heart of our republic, not democracy, like all the Democrats say. Uh, I but agree. It, it, it's pretty bad. Uh, but I had the other comment, of course, comment if you want, is I love the news that all was getting in tizzy. You know, uh, Bob Mueller impaneled a grand jury in the District of Columbia. Of course, the court impanels a grand jury, and the mm-hmm. Constitution requires a grand jury to be impaneled in the or someone to be charged in the state and district that the crime occurred and i thought mm-hmm. trump's campaign was managed out of new york city and that's where this supposed collusion took place <laughs> Did you? Well, yeah well, that's a good point and yeah. you know I, I will tell you this though as i travel around the state you know i i, I people i never get any questions about russia or, or any anything to do with russia the people I talked to, and I know y'all hear this too. The guys are people are interested in, in getting laws enforced and supporting the Second Amendment and and, and and getting more money back from the government and put it in their pockets and getting rid of all these crazy regulations. You yeah, know, I mean, they're sick of Washington, I, I, really. I, you know, uh, they really are. They really are. What? Let me ask you this, because you know, I can anticipate the federal courts doing something else to Trump. What? What can we do to curb these federal, not just the Supreme Court, but these lower federal courts from jumping into business that is none of theirs? Well, that's a great question. I ran into that, as you know, you guys know, for years as attorney general because we were suing the Obama administration all the time for that very reason. They would find a liberal court somewhere, yeah. typically out west you know, the Ninth Circuit, yeah. and they would file a lawsuit and get some consent decree or some other thing like that. They end run the Constitution and the legislative process. And so I guess the simple answer, and this is this is why President Trump's election was so important, is, is conservative judges who believe in the rule of law and will enforce the law and the Constitution. And, and so you know, getting Neil Gorsuch on the court was a critical thing. And now we just got... Um, uh, Kevin Newsom here in the 11th Circuit, he's a conservative Let me, guy let me from, throw something out to you, and I'll, I'll yeah. mail it to you. How about jurisdiction stripping? How about uh, you, mm-hmm. all, you all, your prior congresses, are the ones that expanded the jurisdiction of all the courts? Because mm-hmm. up until 1876, you couldn't file in a U.S. district court on a case involving a law or uh, a law or the Constitution of the United States that wasn't uh, grounds for jurisdiction of a U.S. district court. You filed all those in state courts. And, yep. you know, it, it'd be perfectly proper to do that. I think the producer here is worrying us about But no act of Congress required because they are running every aspect of our lives. And, mm-hmm. and we all know they weren't supposed to. But, Mr. Producer, do we need to step into a break? Is it? Uh, about 15 seconds. Okay, he says about 15 seconds. I, I assume y'all. Can you, uh, can you hold to the break? Sure, be glad to. Okay, be Hang glad on. to, guys. All right, yep. well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll uh, have more with Senator Strange when we come back with Armed Alabama on 106.5. FM Talk 1065, the Gulf Coast Weather Authority, and Dr. Bill Williams. The Gulf Coast can expect a few evening thunderstorms tonight. Low temperatures will be around 75 degrees at daybreak. For Wednesday, scattered thunderstorms with highs in the upper 80s. And the outlook for Thursday, mostly cloudy with scattered thunderstorms again and highs in the upper 80s. 
This is meteorologist Dr. Boo Williams for FM Talk 1065. FM Talk 1065, the Gulf Coast Weather Authority. For FM Talk 1065, I'm Roseanne Haven. News 5. Matthew Moberg has waived extradition to Mississippi, where he faces a capital murder charge in the death of a Sims teenager, 16-year-old Brian Jesse Parker. Moberg has been in Mobile Metro Jail since May 24th. He did face charges in Alabama for burglary, attempting to elude, and obstructing governmental operations in Alabama. But authorities dropped those charges so he could face the more serious charge in Mississippi. Parker was last seen alive with Moberg at a Dollar General in Lusta. Mississippi. You can continue to book cruises out of the port city. The Mobile City Council unanimously approved a deal struck between the mayor and Carnival Cruise to extend the company's contract through December of 2018. Alabama's Secretary of State is expecting a low turnout at the polls next Tuesday, the special election for U.S. Senate. Right now, all 221 voting machines that serve 88 precincts in Mobile County are being tested. For FM Talk 1065, I'm Roseanne Haven, News 5. If your spine is in a bind, it's time to be aligned. For 20 years, Dr. Justin Foster has been diagnosing and taking care of spinal problems. Misaligned vertebrae can hurt due to a strain or sprain from an accident or be injured by repeated use and can lead to a pinched nerve if not fixed. Pinched nerves can cause a series of discomforts including decreased flexibility, headaches, muscle, joint, disc, and nerve pain. Foster Chiropractic of Tillman's Corner, easy to find across from Lowe's off range line. Could you defend yourself, your family, your home against an assailant? Do you know your legal rights? What is the law on carrying a firearm? Do you know defensive shooting? All of this and more will be taught at Armed Alabama's Level 1 class. For more information, visit armedalabama.com slash classes. That's armedalabama.com slash classes. What if I told you your business could double, triple, or even quintuple the amount of commerce your organization can do? Emulus Creative has done just that for their clients, and now they're looking to help you. My name is Chase Webster, and I started Aimless Creative as a way to help you reach your desired audience in the right way. There's no need for you to spend all this time and effort trying to advertise your company when you should be running it. Find Aimless Creative online or on Facebook, and let's talk about how we can grow your business together. Step up to the firing line. Armed Alabama is back. Questions, comments, and texts at 343-0106. All right, welcome back to Armed Alabama. We still have Senator Strange on the line with us. Glad you could hang with us through the break. Appreciate it. Glad to be with you. Thank you again for having me on tonight. Yes, sir. Our pleasure. Well, I wanted to, uh, if I could, uh, mention one thing to your listeners might be interested in uh, that I was really uh, happy to get involved with. You know, after the, uh, I'm honored to have the National Rifle Association's endorsement, of course, uh, for the work I've done, uh, uh, you know, defending the Second Amendment. But uh, after the tragic uh, shooting uh, at the baseball field about, it's been a couple of months ago now, and I had a staff member out conducting practice. He was on the mound. It was just a miracle he wasn't shot. I reached out to the uh, NRA uh, team, Chris Cox and the, and the folks in Washington, and, and asked them if they would be willing to provide uh, uh, gun safety instruction, and including you know, tips on how to deal with an active shooter situation for any congressman or staff person on Capitol Hill, just free of charge. And uh, they have been uh, gracious and said they would be happy to do that. I've been to follow up with them and see if anyone's taken them up on it. The problem, of course, in the District of Columbia is, is we're disarmed. That's right. They don't, they, yeah, that's they don't real really useful. Guns, which is the what? The, which is probably which is the problem, of course. Only the criminals have guns, and it's a perfect example of what happens there. A bunch of sitting ducks. And if it hadn't been for the brave actions of uh, two Capitol police officers who happened to be there, it would have been a carnage. But uh, they took out this guy, and uh, it, it was fantastic. Typical. Uh, no really guns. Well, uh, but, uh, I, I want to, uh, again, thank you for letting me be on. I want to uh, remind your listeners that uh, the election, of course, is coming up a week from today on August 15th. And this is a critically important election for Senator. And uh, folks know me, and I've been fortunate to be elected twice as Attorney General and, and focused on law and order. But now I'm in Washington working as hard as I can to support President Trump and his agenda. So I'm hoping that the folks listening to this uh, 
uh, to you guys and the, and the, and the folks in, in the South Alabama. If they're looking for somebody who's a common sense conservative who actually gets things done, supports the president and has the NRA endorsement that they'll vote for me next uh, Tuesday the 15th. I'd be honored to have their vote. you got to answer my trivia. What is tomorrow in hit day in history? Pretty sure it's tomorrow. Maybe it's today. <laughs> I don't know. Nagasaki so Day. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah the, the oh. atomic bombing in Nagasaki. That's, that's today. Wow. That's today. Yeah. yeah. Either today or tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow, but maybe today. I have to check. Wow. Now, yeah. now that you brought that up, I yeah. have to check that bit of trivia. <laughs> well, all right. Well, I, I we'll really let you have a pass. That you spread the word. Everybody vote. Use your constitutional right to get out and vote. There you uh, go. First of your choice. We'll God, see you. Thank you so much, and, and uh, Adam, happy birthday, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Good. Thank you for joining Talk us. Talk to you guys soon. Sure. See you. Bye. You know, uh, I've watched, uh, there have been a couple of good books, and new histories now that the um, a lot of material has come out um, in the past few years that has been classified as secret. And uh, the Japanese were never going to surrender. Uh, they had not no none of their troops had surrendered thus far in the war. They hadn't surrendered any of their armies since I think it was 400 BC, and uh, you know, and they think I hate to even give them credit that had not the Russians even attacked and our bombs hit, they weren't going to surrender. Now we could have really made it easy and just guaranteed that the emperor stay on his throne. And they would have surrendered a little earlier, but we weren't didn't want to do that. Uh, but uh, you know, for anybody to question the wisdom of that, they just failed to understand what was going on. Right. Uh, matter of fact, I was um, in the secret city uh, just a few weeks ago, and that's Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Yeah. That was dubbed the uh, term "secret city," and, uh, and went through the um, the uh, nuclear power energy museum there. Uh, and they have a section of that museum, and it's dedicated to the actual development of uh, America's um, nuclear weapons, and of course, their, our strategic defense um, at that time. And it was very interesting about the the uh, monumental effort that the government put in, and each employee that was there, and the commitment that they had. It to like uh, develop that place, thousand people. Oh were my God, that. it was unbelievable. And it was pretty much it, totally secret. Yeah, it was. Oak Ridge wasn't even on the map, uh, uh, any maps un until I think the 1960s. So it was. Um, but anyway, it was going through that museum was was pretty neat to see uh, the men and women's contribution to um, America's war effort, of course, and to the uh, atomic bomb. Whether you believe it was good that we used it or you believe it wasn't good that we use it uh however i think is the carnage and and as bad as it was when it was used i think it saved many many lives on both sides um and you know we didn't realize how close the japanese were of total starvation they had really months supplies of food and we didn't know that and had we planned the invasion like we were planning it in November, December, possibly into the next year. There would have been mass famine. More Japanese would have died. So we saved probably a lot of Japanese. They were less killed at either Hiroshima or Nagasaki than the firebombing of Tokyo. So, you know, it's just a lot of, you know, a lot of um, bleeding hearts and a lot of, uh, you know, your left-wing activists now that uh, – and, of course, the Soviets wanted to get in there and occupy half the country, so they were going to take off if we had one. But, you know, Judge, the uh, uh, the atomic bomb kept has kept the peace for, what, 73 years? Sure, sure. Uh, I think uh, that is solely one primary reason why we have not had a world war since World War II. I, I think you're right. I think you're right. And there we have another caller. Yeah, we have on the line with us Representative Mo Brooks. So glad you can join us here on Armed Alabama tonight. My pleasure, Adam. It's uh, very nice of you to allow me to come on today. 
Uh, anytime, we're uh, we're glad to have you join us. We tonight. normally don't let Yankees from uh, Huntsville <laughs> or Northern Alabama on the show, hey, but <laughs> wait a second. I was born in Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, <laughs> all right, right on. We'll, yeah, y'all were the first to secede. We'll give you a pass on that one then. That's great. All right, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm not so sure it was wise to fire those. Shots on Fort Sumter. We might should have waited a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, maybe, <laughs> so. maybe so. Maybe <laughs> so. Maybe filed a quiet title action or something. <laughs> so uh, appreciate you joining us, uh, Representative Brooks. I, I had a chance to uh, meet with you uh, probably about a month and a half ago now. I don't know. Time gets by me real fast. I know it goes fast for you during this campaign season, but I really enjoy meeting and talking with you. Um, and uh, and so glad you could join us tonight. And you had, uh, uh, of course, this is Armed Alabama. We talk about self-defense and we talk about uh, the Second Amendment and your right to defend yourself. Uh, but you were actually really involved in, uh, uh, in the incident that took place at the baseball practice uh, in Alexander, Virginia. I was right in the middle of it. Yes, sir. There were uh, the uh, assassin shot over 60 shots out of his SKS rifle. Uh, was that a Chinese pistol. or a Soviet? Chinese, I guess. And then um, overall, there were over 100 shots fired wow. for about a six to eight minute period of time. Um, fortunately, our law enforcement officers, uh, the Capitol Police, were able to hold the assassin at bay a little bit until the Alexandria police came. And uh, then a petite little lady armed with a rifle put a couple into him. Um, I forget who it was that put the third shot into him that took him down and ended uh, his effort to just kill as many of us as he could. Uh, I like that term that you use, uh, Representative Brooks, an assassin, because that's exactly oh, what yeah. he was. Well, he had an assassin list in his pocket. Yes. I don't know if you're aware of that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Some of us who were on it, conservative thought leaders um, in Washington, uh, D.C., and on uh, Capitol Hill. And my name you know, is kind of uh, troubling. Uh, to find out that the guy who's there with the gun, um, once he's dead, they go through his effects, and in his pocket is a sheet of paper listing six different congressmen with our office room numbers and some other information that the FBI doesn't want me to talk about yet. But it's quite clear that he was there on a mission to try to remove some of our conservative leaders in the House of Representatives. This was purely a political assassination attempt. And there are a lot of them out there, Congressman, these left-wing lunatics. And, you know, they're out in the streets. I've never seen the kind of political violence that we've got now. And it's all coming from the left. That's how I read it. Yeah. I think you're spot on, uh, particularly the socialist wing of the Democratic Party. Yeah, if which is becoming larger. <laughs> that's how they've come into power more often than not, is through force of arms, beginning uh, with the Soviet Union. Yep. And, you know, there's some of them out now, you know, outside Trump Towers when he won that had hammer and sickle flags. <laughs> and they were springing up like mushrooms. Let me ask you a quick question while we're talking about that. You know, back in Chicago in 68 and when we were having all those disruptions caused by communists, you know, the federal government would prosecute under, for instance, 18 U.S. Code 241 and some of these civil rights codes because it's a violation of federal law to keep someone from exercising a right guaranteed under the U.S. Constitution. And these people at Berkeley, these Antifa, all those folks, they're violating that, and it's a 10-year sentence. Why aren't the feds going after them on, on right. these charges instead of, I assume, the city police arrest them for you know, disorderly conduct or something like that? Any idea? I have no explanation for it. And the, the assassin in this case uh, in Alexander, Virginia, he was also a frequent participant at a website called Terminate the Republican Party. Good God. Wow. And I hope the FBI is looking into uh, those people who frequent uh, that website. Uh, certainly it, it seems that he was inspired in part to do what he did by the kind of hatred that is spewed on these websites towards conservatives, people who believe in the foundational principles that have made America who we are. Yeah. These socialists, they don't like those principles. They yeah. don't like the idea that you should work if you want to have money that allows you to have the material things that you want to have. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Congressman uh, Tim Kaine's son, he's a professional anarchist. 
with uh, Antifa. He travels around the country disrupting uh, speakers and organizations, etc. <laughs> That's his profession, apparently. Well, if they're exercising freedom of speech rights, that's one thing. It's another thing when they go beyond that and they incite the kind of violence that we saw in Washington, D.C., when Donald Trump was sworn in, where there was oh, vandalism yeah. of buildings. He's part of that uh, group, there, too. Yeah. There was a limousine that was uh, burned to the ground or in Berkeley. Right. Or, again, there is arson or some of these uh, felonies that we've had attempted against uh, United States congressmen, including... Uh, just my neighbor uh, to the north, where um, one of the step into a break, Congressman. Can you hold a minute? The motor vehicle. To, can you hold a minute, it? Congressman? We got to step into a break, and he's gonna. Can you hold? Yeah, we'll be right back. We'll be right back with more of Armed Alabama. Hold on, folks. Step up to the firing line. Armed Alabama is back. Questions, comments, and X at 3430106. What we've got here is failure to communicate. Some men you just can't reach. So you get what we had here last week, which is the way he wants it. Well, he gets it. I don't like it any more than you, man. All right. Welcome back to Armed Alabama. Glad you could hang with us through the break. We still have on the line Representative Mo Brooks, candidate for senator in Alabama. Glad you can hang with us, Representative. We appreciate it. My pleasure. And we know you've got some other things to do. So uh, if you will, uh, you have a couple of things that you want to say. Um, Now is your chance. Thank you. Well, sure. Uh, the campaign is unfolding uh, fairly well. Uh, Luther Strange and Mitch McConnell, as you know, they have virtually carpet bombed my reputation in South and uh, Middle Alabama, and so I've got uh, some repair work to do there to get uh, those folks to know me as well as well as the people in North Alabama know me. In North Alabama, Luther Strange's attack ads have really backfired. Uh, we're ahead of him about three to one in the uh, Tennessee Valley of the state. This stuff where. Luther Strange tries to portray me as an ally of Nancy Pelosi or a supporter of the Islamic State uh, or anti-military up here. That's just so absurd people laugh at it, and it really denigrates Luther Strange's own reputation because the charges are so far out there that they have no credibility whatsoever. In South Alabama, Mobile Bay Area, Wiregrass, Montgomery, and around Interstate 20, the uh, Anniston, uh, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa Corridor, they don't know me quite as well, so I've got my tour in front of me to help them understand that I am the principal conservative in this United States Senate race. You can look at my record to confirm that, Luther Strange's attack ads notwithstanding. Uh, there's another thing I want to mention about all this, though, and everybody in Alabama needs to watch out for this. You remember 1986 when Baxley and Graddock went at it real strong yeah. and they did such damage to each other that all of a sudden Guy Hunt got elected, uh, which was an impossibility in the minds of the Democrats. Luther Strange is doing a great disservice to the Republican Party in the state of Alabama and to our candidates because he's attacking so viciously and so falsely that it is hurting Roy Moore, it is hurting myself, and it is hurting Luther Strange such that uh, our nominee uh, may be wounded enough to where the Democrats might actually be competitive, and we cannot afford Hmm. to let the Democrats win this Senate seat. So I hope he'll cool his jets a little bit and be more positive and talk about uh, public policy issues rather than uh, this war of personal disparagement that he's he's initiated against uh, Roy Moore and myself. You know, yeah. When, when, I, when I announced that on May 15th, I committed to the public that I wasn't going to say anything derogatory about any of my opponents unless I was attacked, in which case I would respond. And I think if you look at my remarks about Roy Moore, I have not said a single thing publicly in a derogatory fashion about Roy Moore. Luther Strange, however. Um, He went out of bounds, and so I'm having to respond to restore my reputation that he's doing his darndest to try to destroy. Well, you know, Blackstone said the right to your good reputation, good name, was one of the top ten rights that an Englishman had. So uh, that's where dueling came from. Because people don't know you as well, you were a county commissioner. 
you were, as I'm just trying to remember from my memory, and you were DA at one time. Isn't that correct? I was district attorney in Madison County, assistant district attorney in Tuscaloosa. I've also served in the uh, Alabama State Legislature, and I've got a spotless ethics record over 30 years, more or less, of public service, either in elected or appointed capacity. And that's something I'm proud of. Um, again, Luther Strange's attack ads uh, notwithstanding, but it, it's all catching up. In the latest internal tracking polling we have amongst folks who are most likely to vote, we've now taken a lead over Luther Strange, albeit still in the margin of error. And then on a secondary level, if you look at a poll that came out of Louisiana, public poll, um, that showed us within the margin of error where Luther Strange was a little bit ahead. And then uh, with respect to the Mobile Bay Area, let me mention uh, a couple of things. I'm the guy who fought with Bradley Byrne to try to make sure we had the money for three littoral combat ships. Uh, Luther Strange voted with John McCain to cut that from three to one uh, in the Senate Armed Services Committee, and that's a huge contrast for the people of Mobile Bay Area. Uh, additionally, you've got, uh, of, of a similar note, uh, what has happened with the uh, BP oil spill, uh, Deepwater Horizon, where Mobile Bay was shortchanged. And I hope the people of Mobile Bay will remember that. We were as shortchanged. Try to decide, <laughs> uh, as you all try to decide who you're going to vote for, in this very important election for the United States Senate. And then finally, it's really coming down to a three-person race. And I hope voters will look at myself, Luther Strange, and Roy Moore and try to figure out which one of those three best represents their values because that's, that's it. The other six candidates are good people, but none of them are polling any higher than 6 5 uh, 7%, somewhere in that ballpark, while the three top candidates are in the 20s. So it may be good to cast a protest vote for one of those other six candidates, but in effect, that does not affect the outcome because the winner of this primary is going to be either Roy Moore, Mo Brooks, or Luther Strange. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Now, well, we'll see if you're a winner in the history quiz. What on what – tomorrow is a famous date in history. What happened tomorrow in history? I'm not going to tell you how many years ago, but it was pretty important in the United States. So you're talking about, okay, August 15th, August 8th, no, August 9th. 9th. Okay, you're going to give me a bigger hint than that. August 9th, it would be uh, about a little before you were born, I'm sure. A little before you were born, not a lot before you were born. I, well, in the, I, I in the, Korea, I think of World War II, but you're losing World me. War II. Finger, World War II. Finger on a watch that tells me I'm supposed to give a speech at this rally. Nagasaki. <laughs> Nagasaki. Oh, Thank, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah. yeah. Nagasaki was bombed tomorrow in Hiroshima hey, on the 6th. that helped save my dad's life. He was a combat engineer. We were just talking about that. Yes, yeah. sir. We were just discussing that. Representative, we, we appreciate you joining us tonight. We know you got other things going on, but thank right. you for calling in to Armed yeah, Alabama. we have a rally up here in the Tennessee Valley, and if you'll please forgive me, I'm going to go. It's uh, a be beautiful a area. Call. really is. Thank Tell you, sir. Thank hello you. for Take us. Care. Take care. Yeah, the, the state is far bigger than people realize because, you know, you're used to going east-west here, and you're in and out of the state in, what, 30 minutes or something like that. You go north and south, and it's a big state. 400 miles about. Oh, yeah, and it's really beautiful up that way. Uh, but um, I'll get the name of it. There's a good book about Athens, Alabama, uh, the Union commander in charge. Ten years before was a Cossack colonel in the Tsar's army, and after they retook Athens, Alabama, he basically said, you all can have your way for X number of hours. He says, that's the Mos Moscovite way. And they sacked and looted the little town for the, while he took a nap. And uh, he was court-martialed, and uh, pre um, the, command, the general, later President uh, Garfield, they found him guilty. But his wife got to President Lincoln and told Lincoln all about it, and they set aside the court-martial and made him a general. Um, so that's uh, Colonel Tershevich, I think is his name, Basil Tershevich. But I'll get to the name of the book. We're almost at the top of the hour, and we're going to be going to open lines at the top of the hour. Call in about politics. We'd rather talk about guns. Our yeah, we've, talk, we've got some good subjects to talk about in our second hour, so be sure and hang with us. And our number is 251-343-0106. Here on Armed Alabama, call or text to that number, and we'll talk to you after the top of the hour. 
Go to Facebook on Armed Alabama Radio, FM Talk 1065, and watch us there. Or you can listen to the live stream either at FM Talk uh, 10, FM Talk 1065 or on armedalabama.com. Fine. I fish, I hunt, and I shoot my guns, and I raise a little hell. The things I do, you know I do them well. This is my America, and I'm so proud. And I don't mind, I say it loud. All right, welcome back to the second hour of Armed Alabama. And uh, that is another song from Buck Allen. Buck Allen is a local singer-songwriter. You can check him out on his Facebook page. And uh, be sure and tell Buck Allen that we appreciate him uh, letting us use his song for our radio show and, uh, and tell him how much you like his song. So there's... A lot of different songs you can hear on his Facebook page, and that's Buck Allen, singer, songwriter. Adam Fort, we got two callers, and we're going to get to in just a second, but um, I mentioned this, asked this question of Senator Strange, and if you want to, anybody can look for the full explanation. Go to Judge Rusty Johnston on Facebook and read the full explanation. But all over the weekend or last week we heard uh, Bob Mueller has – uh, in panel a grand jury, that's bad news for Trump in Washington, D.C. And, of course, Article 3, Section 2, um, actually Section, maybe Section 3 uh, of the, let's see, so Article t 3, but it is, yeah, it is Article 3, Section, scroll and work here, 2 of the Constitution says, the trial of all crimes and this is federal crimes, of course, except in cases of impeachment, shall be by jury. And such trial shall be held in the state where said crime, crimes shall have been committed, but when not committed within any state, the trial shall, shall be at such place or places as Congress by law may have directed. If you're talking about this, collusion fantasy and let's go with it a minute that it really happened and maybe this russian chick attorney was involved that was in new york city there is a u.s district court in new york city and the u.s attorney's manual is online uh, i have quotes from it saying the same thing and it also emphasizes a grand jury should never be used in order to call witnesses to preserve their testimony that was also speculated. Well, that's why he has the grand jury in Washington. The federal court calls the grand jury, not, the, not a federal prosecutor. I mean, there's nothing they said that was factual. Uh, one of them said fed, uh, Bob Mueller empowers a federal grand jury. So all of it was wrong. And I'm not even commenting on whether or not there may be fire below the smoke. It's just take 30 minutes and do a little reading. And I'm talking about I saw so-called lawyer experts on television that didn't know what in the world they were talking about. You can't just – the government can't just pick what jurisdiction they want to try you in. That would be the height of, uh, of uh, un injustice uh, to – in fact, they were discussing that with one attorney. Well, they picked Washington because they knew that it voted 96 percent for Clinton. 
Well, you can't do that. It's where the crime allegedly occurred. But do you want to take, uh, who would be next? Johnny C. from Theodore, Alabama. Yeah, uh, how y'all doing tonight? Pretty good. How about you? I'm hanging in there. My question is, uh, I've been following, I'm a, I'm a NRA member. Yeah. And, uh, I've been following, uh, the, uh, the, I'm having a hard time trying to find my words. Me but, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I do the same thing. Trying, <laughs> what I'm following is, uh, the legislative on the, uh, the, uh, suppressor bill. Is that what you're asking about? Yeah, the com- suppressor bill. Yes, sir. It's actually called uh, the Hearing Protection Act. <laughs> Yes, yeah, since we can hear. Um, I don't, my computer is being used to film the Facebook right now, and I was keeping up with it. I'd give us the number. I don't think it's gone anywhere in spite of all the promises that we were given, you remember, at the start yeah, of the year. Oh, this, yeah. it's going to pass this time. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's gone anywhere. But Yeah, we'll, I think it's kind of stalled. Yeah. Yeah, so that would have been a good thing to ask. That'd Senator be a nice Strange when he was on earlier. Well, and it, yeah, and probably Brooks because I think it was it was in hearings in the House. But I tell you what, listen next week we'll get an update on that because I'm disappointed if it hasn't gone anywhere because they acted as if that was going to be an easy deal. And I, I know I, I, that's what I thought because uh, I've been following it and, and uh, it sure would help. Cause I, I shoot quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, it would uh, save my hearing. Plus, I wear I wear Mickey. I call them Mickey Mouse ears because I'm prior Air Force. Yep. Those uh, muffs. And they're hot, but, uh, at, hot in the summer, yep, aren't they? Yep. Whew. Yeah. Because if you get out there and pop off about four, five hundred rounds, you know, you, your ears are ringing. You know, my ear doctor told me at, after it was too late, he said I should have worn the regular earplugs under those earmuffs. Yeah, I, that, well, I was a, I was an aircraft mechanic in the Air Force and, uh, we had to have, uh, earplugs and the Mickey Mouse ears. Yeah, so you knew it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. Sir. I call them when I even when I went to work at the shipyard over there at Ingalls, they gave me what I call plugs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we call them ears on the shooting range. Yeah, we everybody do. got your ears on, your so. eyes and ears on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank yeah. you so much for calling, Johnny. I appreciate listen it. Next week, we'll I'll let be you listen. know. I'll listen to y'all <laughs> every week. It's religiously out here in Theodore. Oh, well, great. thank you so much. We appreciate thank you. that. Yes, sir. Hey, Take Judge, care. what is the uh, suppressor bill proposed to do? That a suppressor becomes just like a firearm. It's regulated just like a firearm, and that's how you buy it. If you're eligible to buy a firearm from a dealer, you can buy a suppressor. And it's regulated now like a machine gun, and it's, it costs you a tax stamp. $250. So, so it, would, it would nine just make months. it easier to go buy one at McCoy's or something. Yeah. Well, it okay. would just make it easier where just a background check, just like you're buying a firearm and you've got the um, – You've got the uh, noise suppressor. You're in and out in 30 minutes or yeah. less. Oh, yeah. Same absolutely. minutes in stock. Yeah. And, it's, you know, to to follow up on what Johnny said, I was just actually at the range this past weekend. I was at Three Brothers Arms, and I had my, uh, my wife and daughter there with me. And, of course, as Johnny said, I actually had um, – uh, earplugs for my daughter, as well as her wearing earmuffs Good. on top of Good. it. When uh, she, you're young, that's yeah. What counts. But of course, you know she's shooting a a, a Walther P22, which is absolutely perfect for her. But there are a lot of other people there shooting as well. So you have a lot of ambient background noise with other people shooting. Uh, yeah. And of course, you know, I wanted her to have that that extra protection, as as Johnny spoke right. about, to have an earplugs and the earmuffs. Of course, she had some. Pink earmuffs. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. And I mean, I've got uh, ringing and, and, and in my ear. And she wouldn't, and she right wouldn't loan them to you. No, no. I, you know, she <laughs> wouldn't loan me her pink earmuffs. So. <laughs> okay, Dennis is going to get mad with us. Yeah. And we are about a half a minute from a break. You want uh, to start? Let's or? start it, and we'll yep. hold him over. Dennis, yep. how are you? Hey, Dennis. I, I'm doing great. I was just going to, you know, put some two cents in about this uh, primary we got coming up Tuesday. I, 
I think the voters of Alabama need to remember, uh, you know, Luther Strange isn't an incumbent. He was appointed that position, and as uh, AG of Alabama, he, um, you know, kind of sat on his hands, in my opinion, regarding our governor, our former governor, um, and uh, basically until he got appointed, uh, then he left that problem for someone else to resolve. Nobody remembers um, uh, anything in the past. You know, it's it's like yeah, nobody it's remembers. Insight, it's insight into in, in his his ability to govern, in my opinion. You know, nobody remembers Bob Mueller was the one that botch basically was in charge of the anthrax investigation. They had some poor soul fingered for years until he killed himself. You know, that was never solved. That was Bob right. Mueller in charge of the FBI. You know, nobody right. remembers the past. Well, and, our, our our politicians are in the bad habit of cutting themselves deals on a regular basis, and uh, uh, I, you think? I, I didn't like the way that one went down, to be honest with you. I, I think that uh, Mo Brooks, Trip Pittman, uh, people of that nature and character who've been reelected, you know, well, not Trip Pittman as often as Mo Brooks, but been reelected time and time again by their constituents, obviously have done the job that their constituents elected them to do originally, and uh, we've got... Luther Strange has been appointed, and, uh, you know, he's not really ever been elected except to the Attorney General, which one of the major things that came across his desk regarding our governor, he kind of sat on his hands until he got himself appointed. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Got to run to a break, though. Thank you, and I wish I was down in Gulf Shores with you. Woo. All right. Well, come on down anytime. Thank we'll you. do. We'll do. Take care. Got to step into a break. We'll be back with more of Armed Alabama. When you're running down... Liberty Safes. Moffat and I-65. Look for the giant yellow safe. This program is a production of Armed Alabama, LLC. The comments and views of the hosts are those of Armed Alabama, LLC, for which it is solely responsible. The view and comments of the callers, guests, and texters do not necessarily represent the views of the sponsors or advertisers of Armed Alabama, LLC, or of Armed Alabama, LLC, Bigler Broadcasting, LLC, FM Talk 1065, or WABH. No comments from Judge Rusty Johnston should be taken as legal advice, but as educational information. Judge Johnston is not engaged in the practice of law and should not be sought out to answer legal questions off the air. Seek legal advice from a qualified attorney who knows the complete specifics of your legal matter. Longleaf Pine is the South's original pine tree, towering over all others. Vast clear-cutting logging operations in the first half of the last century destroyed these beautiful longleaf forests, some well over 100 years old. Their woods sent to New England, New York, and Europe. Many Southerners have no memory of the magnificent longleaf forests that covered the South. The America's Longleaf Restoration Initiative is a concerted effort to restore and conserve longleaf pine forests. The best part is it's working. For more info, visit americaslongleaf.org. Don't get caught in the dark when the lights go out. Grayson Air Conditioning installs Honeywell home standby generators to keep you out of the dark. Grayson Air Conditioning repairs most other generator brands and offers service agreements to keep your generator ready when power is lost. With this agreement, you won't have to leave home when a storm is coming. Like Grayson AC on Facebook, on the web at GraysonAirConditioning.com, or stop by their offices, 7200 Cottage Hill Road, next to Regions Bank, or call 633-5665 for service service. Locally owned and operated, Priola Ace Hardware and Lumber carries a complete line of industrial products to homeowner project needs. Servicing all of Mobile County, located one mile north of I-65 exit 19 on Highway 43, we bring you what you expect with true customized customer service. From a full service lumber and plywood supplier to a K2 cooler dealer is what you'll find along with a huge selection of Milwaukee and DeWalt power tools and accessories, safety equipment, craftsman tools, paint, plumbing, electrical supplies, propane, and concrete. We are your one-stop shop with personal service. See Jamie and her A-team for unsurpassed customer service and competitive pricing. We are locally owned and operated, so we know what our customers need, and we will deliver on our promise of helping you is the most important thing we are going to do today. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. 
step up to the firing line. Armed Alabama is back. Questions, comments, and texts at 343-0106. I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? Well, to tell you the truth in all this excitement, I kind of lost track myself. But being this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? And a 44 Magnum will not blow your head clean off. That is uh, kind of uh, Newton's law. It will not do that. Yeah, but if you're the recipient, would it really matter? Uh, no. It, if you got hit in the head with one, you probably wouldn't, you wouldn't, wouldn't care. Yeah, your lights would go out, but it wouldn't blow your head clean off. Uh, probably take a rocket propel grenade to but, do that. But that but makes great movie scripts. It does. It does. And it's a good movie. And Eastwood has made a lot of good movies. I was telling you I was in the middle of a gun project, and not they weren't valuable weapons, but one of the predecessors to the uh, Remington 1100, probably the most popular shotgun ever made, maybe the 870 was, but was the Remington 1148. And my uncle had one, wasn't in great shape, it had one of those, oh, what were the, the chokes on there, the variable chokes, you know, you could adjust. Yeah, you can adjust yeah, the I can't pattern. think of the yeah. name of But anyway, so... And it needed, it just looked bad, had a rust. So I bought a few parts, and then I found a gun store going out of town, on uh, going out of business on Gun Broker, and I picked another up for 99 bucks. So I bought it for my part, spare parts, because, you know, you can buy some spare parts that are, you know, 25 bucks. Well, that gun looked so much better than the one I was restoring. I thought, <laughs> I can't do that. So now I'm restoring Decision, two huh? simultaneously, <laughs> and I've got them both down to bare metal. I've got you sound the stocks, as bad as me. one stock completed. The other one I'm on the fourth co coat of tongue oil, uh, and I'm just <laughs> and just thinking, why did I start this? <laughs> is tongue oil pretty easy to find? It is easy to find, and. Because that was some beautiful it, work that you had. And it's, it's probably the easiest thing to apply because you don't get bubbles in it. You don't um, – there are a lot of things that, you know, there's some applications that are just really tough to put on. Now, I've put tongue oil even on tables before. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Well, it, it just uh, looked like rich. You put it over your hand. Wood. Yeah, you yeah. put it over your hand. I, I usually do a little small rag. Uh, now, the bad side is I, I tend to do, go a little overboard on things. I usually put about 10 coats, mm -hmm. but you can put, you know, two on a day. Is that OCD kicking in? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. is. <laughs> I mean, I polish my shoes three or four times well, that's when I bring them home from the store. Uh, is for you know, before I put my feet in them, uh, but that's just a little a habit. spit in there, too. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, that's just a habit with the old time shoe polish. I wonder if anybody does spit shines anymore. Oh, there, there are a couple. There's a guy down at the Riverview, yeah. uh, whatever they call it, that does that, but uh, I mean, I personally do, but I know commercially there's a guy down there that does. There's a couple of people around town, and there's man, a shoe shine stand yeah, down there, yeah. Yeah. Shows you how long I've been since oh, I've yeah. been downtown. Yeah. He's a great guy and a bunch of worthless thugs. He was shining my shoes one time. They surround him and start taunting him because he's working. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Trying to that, jump that, him out of a job. Yeah. Uh, they start calling him shoe shine boy, slave, you know, the whole thing. And uh, that that was really disgraceful. Uh, you know, and he's making a good living. I tell you what, I don't care if you're shining shoes or, or uh, like some of the casinos, they have gentlemen in there keeping the bathrooms clean. Uh, it's honorable work. You work it hard. Is. You earn your money. You take your check and go home and feel good about it. Some people are old-fashioned like me. I, somebody comes into a business meeting with me, and if I, I, I'm not somebody who looks at their shoes, but if I notice it looks like their shoes hadn't been sh ever shined, I'm thinking that says something about them. That's why I keep you know? my feet hidden under yeah. the counter over yeah. there. <laughs> and 
Or, you know, of course, no, everybody has forgotten rules of etiquette anymore. What happened uh, to tie clips? That's my thing. <laughs> everybody, because everybody, when everybody started the, electronic eavesdropping, uh, people stopped wearing them. Hey, that, no, it's not a bug. I'm wearing his just a jacket. Right. I really like our president, but he ties his tie too long. He I does. Think. People have commented. I have a Ronald President Ronald Reagan tie, uh, tie clip, mm -hmm. uh, official one given to me by him, uh, but I don't wear it. But the outside <laughs> of the tie should stop at the belt buckle. Yeah, it should. The tip of it should stop at the be belt buckle. We're just old school, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'm old school. I like to let ladies off of elevators first. Now, you notice I said ladies, not women. Because there are a lot of, a lot of females that watch aren't. out now. You're going to be careful, uh, and uh, <laughs> you know. But that's all that's gone by the wayside. Uh, it's but the world functioned a little better when people were more courteous and obeyed those rules. And you know, it happened a lot in the South, but it still happened in the North among people. They're just decent people. That, I, don't I, I still hold doors. Oh, I do too. I hold doors. And I don't care who they are. I don't care if it's a black woman. I don't care if it's an old old Hispanic man. I hold doors for people that I... Pers now, some people with all the... Uh, I don't know what the proper term is. Let's say disabled activists. Uh -huh. Some I've had people snap at me before. I don't need to hold the door. Okay, that's fine. But I'm going to offer to... The Absolutely. other thing that's irritating, I call somebody by their Mr. So-and-so mm -hmm. until I am asked to call them otherwise. I don't call, um, I don't care whether they're young or old, I call them Miss, you know, Mr. Moss until you say, hey, make it Charlie. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it's amazing how many people will just start off calling you their first name, calling you by your first name. You've never met them before, and it's just rude. Uh, but that's not going to change. Yeah, but, you know, it's just those little things, and it takes and little. And if they effort. want your business, and they're it, not going to get mine. You know, so. and it doesn't take a whole lot of energy and effort to be polite, to be civil. And I think they're business-like, and, I'm, you know, I would be more likely to do business with them than someone else. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know how we got off on that, but well, it, uh, we did because uh, it's important. Some topic. people that's how duels started in a lot of cases. Uh, when I was talking about the right to your reputation, that's in the top five of Blackstone's rights of Englishmen: the right to your reputation. Because if your reputation's ruined, you might not be able to work anymore, feed your family. Uh, it was very important, and people laugh about well, dueling. Somebody called you a scoundrel, a thief, whatever. If he or, didn't retract you took it that, personally. Or a nerve herder. Yeah, if he didn't take it back, <laughs> you know, you might not be able to practice law, medicine, whatever, and you might starve to death. So. I, that my granddad said, your word is your bond. There yeah. you go. You know, yeah. if you say you're going to do something for somebody, do it. Right. Finish the job. So I actually – Finish uh, them off, too. Judge, you commented about – Blackstone, I've actually enjoyed reading his commentaries. Uh, uh, Charlie, if you don't know, Judge has bought me every one of Blackstone's commentaries, and uh, I kind of go to, through it. He's trying to tell you something, Adam. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe I should. <laughs> maybe I should have been a lawyer. Maybe in a Dr. Forrest future McDonald's life or something. Took a year off from teaching. He, seriously, <laughs> he took a year off from teaching, and he said, "I wanted to learn Blackstone." <laughs> hey, it so would take a year. Can you imagine? I, you know, I've just been kind of skimming through it and highlighting different things. But uh, we'll be back after this break with more Armed Alabama. And hats off to Theodore. FM Talk 1065, the Gulf Coast Weather Authority, and Dr. Bill Williams. The Gulf Coast can expect a few evening thunderstorms tonight. Low temperatures will be around 75 degrees at daybreak. For Wednesday, scattered thunderstorms with highs in the upper 80s. And the outlook for Thursday, mostly cloudy with scattered thunderstorms again and highs in the upper 80s. This is meteorologist Dr. Bill Williams for FM Talk 1065. FM Talk 1065, the Gulf Coast Weather Authority. 
For FM Talk 1065, I'm Roseanne Haven. News 5. Matthew Moberg has waived extradition to Mississippi, where he faces a capital murder charge in the death of a Sims teenager, 16 year old Brian Jesse Parker. Moberg has been in Mobile Metro Jail since May 24th. He did face charges in Alabama for burglary, attempting to elude, and obstructing governmental operations in Alabama. But authorities dropped those charges so he could face the more serious charge in Mississippi. Parker was last seen alive with Moberg at a Dollar General in Lucy. Dale, Mississippi. You can continue to book cruises out of the port city. The Mobile City Council unanimously approved a deal struck between the mayor and Carnival Cruise to extend the company's contract through December of 2018. Alabama's Secretary of State is expecting a low turnout at the polls next Tuesday, the special election for U.S. Senate. Right now, all 221 voting machines that serve 88 precincts in Mobile County are being tested. For FM Talk 1065, I'm Roseanne Haven, News 5. If your spine is in a bind, it's time to be aligned. For 20 years, Dr. Justin Foster has been diagnosing and taking care of spinal problems. Misaligned vertebrae can hurt due to a strain or sprain from an accident or be injured by repeated use and can lead to a pinched nerve if not fixed. Pinched nerves can cause a series of discomforts including decreased flexibility, headaches, muscle, joint, disc, and nerve pain. Foster Chiropractic of Tillman's Corner, easy to find across from Lowe's off range line. Could you defend yourself, your family, your home against an assailant? Do you know your legal rights? What is the law on carrying a firearm? Do you know defensive shooting? All of this and more will be taught at Armed Alabama's Level 1 class. For more information, visit armedalabama.com slash classes. That's armedalabama.com slash classes. Locally owned and operated, Moffitt Road Ace is a member of the largest retailer-owned cooperative in the industry. Moffitt Road Ace is unique and tailored to meet the needs of its local community. With a large plumbing and electrical supply to being the only authorized Yeti dealer in Northwest Mobile, they're committed to being the helpful place by offering our customers products. Just a few of the brands they carry include Craftsman, DeWalt, Scott's, and miracle Grow, High Yield, Toro Mowers, Echo Outdoor Power, Power equipment, Weber grills, Kamado Joe ceramic smokers, Valspar paint, Yeti coolers, Ace, Bayou Classic, and much more. As the helpful hardware folks they promised, helping you is the most important thing we have to do today. Don't get lost in the big box. Shop local. Located on Highway 98 on the edge of Sims, one and a half miles east of the Moffat Road and Schillinger's intersection. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. Step up to the firing line. Armed Alabama is back. Questions, comments, and texts at 343-0106. Maybe, Jose, instead we try to catch the Speedy Gonzalez, we should have caught Slowpoke Rodriguez, the slowest mass in all Mexico. Slowpoke Rodriguez, he's for me. Wait, Jose! Jose, I got to tell you something. Aha! Senor Slowpoke, you will be good with the chili peppers. Hey, Jose, something I forgot to tell you. That's what I wanted to tell you. Slowpoke Rodriguez, he pack a gun. One by one. Now he tells me. And pull the hell out of our country. And we will not let them back in. You take that, Speedy Gonzalez. That's one of my favorite. Even they, back in, what, 40s, knew that self-defense was... The right thing to do, because Speedy Gonzalez and Slowpoke Rodriguez knew that. Tell it. We had a um, well. Let, let's talk about the best gun store, outdoor store that won a Nappy Award uh, recently. Uh, so I guess it was fair in some respects, uh, and that is McCoy <laughs> Outdoors. And I say gun store because we're gun people, but guns, ammunition, running shoes. Uh, you can get 
uh, fishing equipment, uh, camping gear, camping gear. You can get fashion clothes. You can get, gosh, really everything you need down there. I don't guess they sell bicycles, but that's about the only thing. Uh, but uh, it'll be coming up pretty soon. Dove hunting season. What? Gosh, it's about six weeks away, maybe. And so now's the time to go ahead and check your dove hunting gear out. And go ahead and buy it. Don't wait to the last minute. And because it'll be gone. Oh yeah, it always happens. People in Mobile wait to the last minute. Get it now. You get the pick of it. You know, historically, you know, dove hunting season starts around here when it's hot. And so, uh, you know, get what you need now. And they got it all. You know, and and folks, buy your ammunition by the case. Don't buy by the box. It's so much cheaper by the case. And it'll like if it doesn't last ten years. First of all, you shouldn't keep it 10 years. You ought to shoot it up in a couple of months. But if you're somebody that just shoots sparingly, it it will last 10 years, no problem. It'll probably last a lot longer than that. But uh, it is, Adam, significantly cheaper when you buy it by the case, uh, probably a, a buck and a half a box cheaper when you buy it by the case. And plus you have it there, so when you get – decide to go unexpectedly you don't have to run to the store and so that's so much smarter but uh anything you want for any kind of hunting or shooting you need we're going to have to have a show pretty soon uh about proper gun cleaning etiquette how to clean your guns a lot of people are scared to clean they their are because i get a lot of questions in that regard yeah on is mccoy's hard to find it it is first of all it ought to be a tourist destination <laughs> so, <laughs> absolutely like you know a lot of people go to bass pro once you've been to one of them you've really seen them all they have different store designs but they're the same thing but i-65 crosses over spring hill avenue and depending on which way you're going you take the exit that will take you westward towards uh, South Alabama, or what we call Langham Municipal Park. And what is it? A couple of blo about a block. About or a block, yeah. and uh, it is down in the shopping center there. On your right. On your right, and it's um, at the end of the shopping center. If the old timers remember, it's the old K and B drugstore there, and it's McCoy Outdoors. They open uh, every day, but Sunday, and till six o'clock. And great folks in there. You know, most store sporting goods stores. May I help you? No, I'll find it because they, most sporting goods stores, they don't know what they're doing. In McCoy's, they know where everything is and they know something about it. Yeah, so and don't the, be afraid to ask them. Well, that's a good point. They do know something about it. And versus other box stores and stuff like that, they're very prudish on what they put on the shelves and they're very knowledgeable. There's not just and a bunch very of. They're limited on yeah, the training. Well, well there's a the bunch court. of, you know, a lot of stores, there's just a bunch of mess, you know, and this may not necessarily be practical or the best. Uh, equipment yep. uh, or uh, what have you, but McCoy is they're very prudish in what they put on the shelves and is all relevant and usable. Most of them gear. use, I mean, you'll have people there that use yep. archery equipment. Or, Absolutely. You know, and that's that's something, boy. Or they weren't working, at, they wasn't working at a part store or something, you know, two months prior that's or right. whatever. Flipping those guys, flipping burgers. Those guys and gals, they know what's in the store and they know, uh, they know the gear and they know what's there. Uh, because they use it and they're very knowledgeable. So I, I was really proud of them winning nappies because yep. I was afraid one of the big box stores that forces you to buy a gun and then takes it and put it in the trunk of your car because they think you're going to shoot the store up, I guess. Uh, I was afraid one of those places were going to win like one of the chain restaurants in the past one is best restaurant. I think best seafood restaurant in Mobile. Don't want to put them down, but – Red Lobster won one year, and I thought, <laughs> for God's sake, we're here on no, the Gulf Coast have, and yeah, the Red Lobster. Been Winsels or Felix's. Oh, or right, right. So anyway, McCoy's is a great place. They've been good to us, and I think we've got them some business. And when you drop by, just tell them that uh, you heard about them if you didn't already know about them on this show because we love them, and I think they like us and great store, great people. But we had an incident out at the gun Well, show. I was going to say, you know, you're talking about people, uh, you know, escorting them out with their firearms or put in a car, you know. I guess that's to keep them from having a negligent discharge in their car. But that actually happened this past weekend um, at a local gun show. Uh, so, Judge, you know, you and I, we talk at length and at detail about there's no such thing as an accidental, 
accidental discharge. Now, I don't always, even know that I like the term negligent either. Cause yeah, it's because it's, I mean, it's it, always at a negligence of somebody or someone uh, for a reason that a firearm goes off. But don't know all the details about it because I'm getting – I've tried to find we're, it we're, out. We're saying, you know, there's that one in a million, like the the gun, the Mark IV that has – Yeah, we talked about million, that. We talked about the, the, the Ruger Mark IV uh, may have an issue that would cause yeah. a discharge – um, but this was the incident that took place in the parking lot at the gun show where my understanding was is they were trying to load the, the firearm, but while the firearm still had the zip tie on it. And so when they cut the zip tie, whatever, um, that the slide went forward and the trigger uh, was depressed by either a the uh, user or the zip tie was still not cut. I'm not sure on the details, so I'm not going to point any fingers. But the thing about it is, is, you know, to limit uh, a negligent discharge, you always, always, always keep your finger off the trigger. And the gun wasn't pointed in a safe direction. No. And and car is the worst place. You know, Judge, you and I have talked several times about, you know, when you're concealed carrying and and you want to try to do a press check. I mean, a car is like the worst place. And that's one of the things we talk about. A lot of cars. Right. If you're nervous. A car there is terrible about it. So, yeah. It's hard, too, because you're sitting there in the seat. You have your holster on your hip. And the firearm, of course, is in the holster. And you pull the firearm out. There's no good way to do a press check or anything else like that in the vehicle. So if you're nervous about those kind of things, you always want to have a firearm that has a uh, a chamber flag. Right. Uh, so I, I use I use a Springfield XD as a good example. I have an XDM that and I use a lot. A lot of them do now. Maybe yeah. most. Do. So when a round is in the chamber, that flag pops up. It's you can easily. Red. Yep. You can easily fill it with your finger while the firearm is still in the holster. Uh, but definitely a car is not a really good place to do a no, press check. No, it, it, it's not. And that's it. Just so many things wrong with that. You know, most negligent discharges are. When you're loading and unloading, and that's why it's so crazy for some police officers, not around here, to ask to disarm you and to unload your firearm. Because, listen, I wouldn't do that, and uh, I think I know I know more than mo- the average police officer. And there are thousands of different types of guns. And by the side of the road at night, I don't want to be unloading somebody's firearm. Mm-hmm. And that's when they tend to go off. Especially those those kind of situations or high stress situations. Yep. Uh, where you have somebody pulled over, you're on the side of the road. It could be lots of traffic coming by. It's always, the and then you're going to try to uh, you know uh, unload a, a firearm that you may not necessarily be familiar with. Lighting isn't good. And, and it's just it's a any at any time whether it's a, a, a officer of the law or it's an individual in their own car or around their own car in a parking lot, that is not the time to load or unload your firearm. Right, right. So so we, we, we brought up a term, Judge, real quick. Um, we brought up a term press check a while ago. And yep. if you're not familiar with a, what a press check is, and that is if you have an auto-loading pistol, um, that you have a magazine uh, in the pistol, and you have a round in the chamber, and what you're doing is you're just pulling back the slide just enough to be able, A, is to be able to see that a, a round is in there by visually seeing the cartridge and also taking your finger and pushing it into um, the opening on the slide uh, to to physically feel that there is a round in the chamber. And then, of course, you allow in the, the slide to go forward. After you uh, get it, your pinky out. Yeah, your after finger. you get your finger out of it. And, and that's basically what that is, a press check. And sometimes you can see it on a movie or something like that. If they have a really good um, uh, consultant on the set, you'll see um, the police, they'll do a press check before they go and serve a warrant or if they know as a uh, somebody's going to be a baddie or whatever on a movie, um, you might see a press check. But uh uh, is something that uh, is 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 that you should know how to do. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. All right, we are almost wrapping it up. So if you got any last minute calls or questions, get them in three four three zero one zero six, and we're going to have to step into a break here in a moment. But uh, come back. I'll try to remember a question that uh, I got on our uh, 
Actually, I got through the judge email, so that'll uh, it'll be interesting. And what but is that email address? That is the judge at Armed Alabama, but I just as soon not be flooded with questions. <laughs> Save them for the air. Or text them. Yeah, text them in. Yeah, if you don't like to talk, uh, text them in. We'll be right back. We don't take our trips on LSD. We don't burn our trap cards down on Main Street Cause we like living right and being free Could you defend yourself, your family, your home against an assailant? Do you know your legal rights? What is the law on carrying a firearm? Do you know defensive shooting? All of this and more will be taught at Armed Alabama's Level 1 class. For more information, visit armedalabama.com slash classes. That's armedalabama.com slash classes. If your spine is in a bind, it's time to be aligned. For 20 years, Dr. Justin Foster has been diagnosing and taking care of spinal problems. Misaligned vertebrae can hurt due to a strain or sprain from an accident or be injured by repeated use and can lead to a pinched nerve if not fixed. Pinched nerves can cause a series of discomforts including decreased flexibility, headaches, muscle, joint, disc, and nerve pain. Foster Chiropractic of Tillman's Corner, easy to find across from Lowe's off range line. Don't get caught in the dark when the lights go out. Grayson Air Conditioning installs Honeywell home standby generators to keep you out of the dark. Grayson Air Conditioning repairs most other generator brands and offers service agreements to keep your generator ready when power is lost. With this agreement, you won't have to leave home when a storm is coming. Like Grayson AC on Facebook, on the web at GraysonAirConditioning.com, or stop by their offices, 7200 Cottage Hill Road, next to Regents Bank, or call 633-5665 for service. Service. Mike Ward's Liberty Safes is proud to be a Liberty Safe dealer, the best home security safe on the market. Locking your firearms in a top-rated Liberty Safe ensures their security from theft and fire. As Americans, we have our Second Amendment right to own guns. But to keep those guns, we need to be responsible and secure our firearms. Don't let your firearms wind up in the wrong hands. Lock them up. Mike Ward's Liberty Safes. Moffat and I-65. Look for the giant yellow safe. When buying a vehicle, don't waste your valuable time. David Parnell at Palmer's Toyota is committed to getting you the best deal on a new, used, or leased car. And David will do that without wasting your time. Don't play the back and forth game. See David Parnell today. Palmer's Toyota, 470 Schillinger Road South. That's David Parnell at Palmer's Toyota, 639-0800, extension 168. Don't forget to see David Parnell at Palmer's Toyota, Schillinger Road, just south of airport. He won't waste your time. Longleaf Pine is the South's original pine tree, towering over all others. Vast clear-cutting logging operations in the first half of the last century destroyed these beautiful longleaf forests, some well over 100 years old. Their wood sent to New England, New York, and Europe. Many Southerners have no memory of the magnificent longleaf forests that covered the South. The America's Longleaf Restoration Initiative is a concerted effort to restore and conserve longleaf pine forests. The best part is it's working. For more info, visit americaslongleaf.org. Step up to the firing line. Armed Alabama is back. Questions, comments, and texts at 343-0106. A friend of Sarah Connor. I was told that she's here. Could I see her, please? No, can't see her. She's making a statement. Where is she? Look, it may take a while. I want to wait. There's a bench over there. I'll be back. Hi, and we are back here with Armed Alabama. And, um... I was going to mention we got a uh, I got an email in that basically said uh, I won't mention the company, but how can so and so business uh, employ large employer around here get away with not allowing employees uh, pursuant to Alabama law to bring their firearms in their leave their firearms in their locked vehicle out of sight if they have a pistol permit or of course during hunting season if they have a hunting license. And I said, well, regretfully, it's just like anything. They can get away with it as long as nobody calls their hand on it. Uh, you might be able to file an injunction 
for injunctive relief before something happens, but you're probably going to have to wait till someone gets fired, then sue them, and nobody wants to be that test case. Now, there are a lot of people through history that have been the test cases, but, you know, in tough economic times, who wants to be the one fired, fighting for his job back, and then only to get rehired, and then, you know, they're going to be watching you like a hawk. And then every time you're 30 seconds late, that's going to be noted, and eventually you'll get fired for something else. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's bad, but eventually somebody will step up and uh, it'll be rectified. Karma, as the uh, Easterners say, or Eastern Hemispheres say, usually gets companies and people like that. Judge, we have a question from Mark. Uh, Mark has texted in with a question. It says, Judge, if you are a concealed carry permit holder, is it legal to pull into a school campus, say, to pick up your child from school with your firearm either concealed on your person or in your vehicle? And does he say what state he's calling, uh, texting from? This is Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> um I don't. Yes, it is. The answer actually. is yes. Yeah, uh, it is actually. Uh, we'll just leave it like that. Like yep. that. So, Mark, if you're the listening, issue. the answer is yes. The issue is being on a school campus, I guess. Right. Yeah. Well, you're there uh, to pick up your uh, child in your vehicle with a concealed carry permit. So. Hey, Snowman had a question, too, about an update on classes. <laughs> and also, I wasn't going to hit that, so thank you very much and for, I told that for to. bringing that but up. But the difference between level one class and level two class. Okay, so the judge and I are, are of course, if, if you don't know, Venue. the judge and I, we do uh, different uh, concealed carry classes, and um, we try to do it as part of an outreach to our, our show, Armed Alabama. And uh, just with everything going on, is you know, and the show turned upside set. down. Yeah, it's just been nuts. So uh, we are trying to put together some classes, and um, the, the venue is Three Brothers Arms, and they are really a great uh, host uh, to us. And hopefully, we can put together something uh, within late September, early October. Uh, but they want to know the difference. The difference. Yeah, on the differences. It's a little yeah. more realistic scenarios, it moving is. and shooting, and that are, type thing. are both levels an all-day class. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's part law and part shooting. Yeah. Well, absolutely. the law yeah. we we give you a quick kind of reminder, but it's more shooting. It's not that. So it presupposes you've been to level one. Right. Uh, level two is mostly shooting. Right. right. Yeah. So if you uh, want to do a level two class and you've been through our level one class, that automatically qualifies you for our level two class, which is much more intense. Uh, it's a lot less uh, classroom time and more range time. So it's more fun. I mean, it, it really yeah. is. So with like a level one program, so it's about 50, 50, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Uh, class time and uh, range time. Whereas the level two class is probably about 80, 20. Yeah. So uh 20% class time, of course, we and 80% range time. We just needed to get time. out of the nineties. I mean, I hate to sound yeah, like Yeah. You know, with a uh, nine degree weather and you're out on the range all day, that doesn't make for a, a, a good it's not day. Pleasant. It's not pleasant. No, and it's, it's pretty hot. So we really focus on uh, we focus on drawing your firearm uh, from your from your holster holster or correct uh, correct uh, presentation of your firearm. We focus on getting those shots off. Yep, getting those shots shots off. We focus on loading and unloading your magazine. Uh, trying to uh, we have a really good methodology that we use to really make you fast. Uh, whether it's per Correct presentation Watch John of Wick, arm. the first John Wick movie. And really, you know, we talk about Hollywood movies being Hollywood movies and being and being silly, but yeah, I mean, to see the the speed and veracity of of the uh, type of the style um, that we try to teach, and John Wick is a good. If you practice and practice yeah. and practice. Got to give a shout out to my barber, Johnny Sullivan. If you're watching on Facebook. All you, the reason I look decent tonight <laughs> is because of Johnny Sullivan. And I waited way too late to go <laughs> because I looked like Howard Hughes or something. Does he have but a shop or did you go to his house? No, he's an old time barber and he has a shop and I don't even, yes, what is that? Yester Oaks Village or, you know, where everybody used to cut through the Yester Oaks apartments, right. but you can't anymore. It's right there. <laughs> so, uh, 
But there are not a lot of old time barbers left. They're there are a few, but I, they've even done away with the Barber Commission. It's all, you're all grandfathered in under, um, I think, the Cosmology Board handles. And yeah, now you got to go to sports clips or something and have yeah. a girl cut your hair. I've had three barbers in my life. Wow. You imagine that? I love those old time barbers. I know, shows. I know. I don't, I don't like changing. In with 10 year old Sports in Illustrated my, magazine. Curtis Reeves outdoors. cut my hair for 20 something years, and he retired last year. Uh, and so that was tough. You know, it about sent me in shock. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think I used, to go, I used to go to Cecil's out on uh, Three yeah. Notch Road. Yeah, and it's uh, they're just not around anymore. Oh, I'm glad I got my stylist. Well, we, listen, oh, yeah. we uh, see, not only like John Edwards, you know, did. It's so uh, silly. We need some more likes on our Facebook page. We haven't broken 2,000 yet. We're almost feel, there, though. Uh, yeah, we're but, almost, but not that uncount. And if you look around, you can find the like button. Yeah, it's on the main page. We got plenty of people coming there, but. You know, yep. they, they skip that like button. Like and share. Well, That's maybe like they don't share. like us. Maybe they don't, but they're reading the stuff on there. <laughs> and I uh, want to thank all of our sponsors. We wouldn't be here. We need those couple more. We have uh, we zeroed in on a couple. But if, if you've got an insurance agency or a car dealership. Uh, or a good seafood restaurant. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Other than. We'd do a simulcast. If you have a restaurant of any type, we could do a simulcast at night. Ooh, if it's free good. food, count me in. <laughs> yeah. That'd be good. Exactly. Now, that'd be, that'd be pretty neat. Um, and, of course, Grace and Air Conditioning. Uh, wow. Air conditioning is essential right now, especially for me. Uh, I don't, I, it'd take me a, I'd, I'd probably die without it. And so. Uh, we're, we thank them all. And, of course, Mike Ward's Liberty Safe. Uh, you know, a burglar alarm is a little questionable because average response time on 911 is seven minutes. You can still get a lot of stuff stolen in seven minutes, but they're not going to steal that Liberty Safe in seven minutes. Yeah, they're not going to throw it on their back and walk no, out with it. No, they're not going to do that. And they're not so. going to open it either. And they're more reasonable than you think. So they just really stop are. by there. They're not going to twist your arm. Stop by there and look at them. They're yeah. right on the service road at uh, I-65 service road, the west side at Moffett Road under the big sign, billboard sign that has the safe on it. All right. I was going to say something, but I absolutely Well, I'll forgot remind you, visit our YouTube channel, Armed <laughs> Alabama, and Facebook page, and you can go to our website. We've got to do a little updating, but that is also armedalabama.com. We could say goodnight. And we'll be here next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. See you then, folks.